ISPM 15 is an international standard that lays out guidelines for countries to help ensure that pests aren't moved when wood packaging materials moved. The world becomes globalized, trade intensifies, and at the same time, of course, wood pallets move more frequently across borders. If there is no standards, uh, the consequences will be a huge uh, spread of pests across countries, uh, and that potentially has uh, negative effects uh, for forests uh, and uh, potentially at the agricultural level. In the 1990s, there were interceptions of some wood-boring pests. Through some surveillance efforts, they determined that uh, these pests were coming in wood packing material. Countries were concerned about this, so some experts were gathered together to develop and draft a standard. ISPM 15 falls into the environmental standard category, and there is evidence suggesting that the ISPM 15 may be detrimental for the economic growth of less developed countries. Through this project, the STDF's goal was to look for practical solutions in Botswana, Cameroon, Mozambique, and Kenya, and also understand how we can further improve the way in which NPPOs are involved in regulating this standard. So many countries have adopted standard because most trade is moved on wood pallets or wood package material, and if you're not compliant, uh, most countries will reject your shipments. So to be part of the game, you have to make sure that your pallets are treated, marked properly, and uh, that you have good compliance. There are three approved methods for treating the wood packaging material. Methyl bromide, heat treatment, and dielectric treatment. The heat treatment process is where the wood is put into a container and then the heat is pumped into it, You're mostly using either dry heat or steam. The methyl bromine is normally used by ensuring the timber is subjected to the gas and through that all the pests are actually killed. The mark that we see, it certifies the wood packaging material showing that it has been treated. It has an IPPC mark, it has the abbreviation of the country and the facility that is doing the treatment and the type of treatment. The mark on the wood must be legible. Illegibility of the mark makes it difficult to clear the produce because you are not able to tell where it has come from and you will not be able to authenticate whether really the wood has been treated. We have the inspectors placed in the different entry points of the country. They're supposed to look for the compliance of that, that, that standard. If it does not comply, it's supposed to stop and take the necessary measure which can be resent back or be destroyed according to the situation. The project relies on three parts. The first component is a qualitative one, the second component is a macroeconomic component, and the last one is a microeconomic component. For the qualitative component, we interviewed a number of uh, national and international stakeholders. The main challenge has been the lack of a national regulation for the implementation of the standard. Well, the main challenge while inspecting the facility is mainly the staffing level. When we have so many products that require to be inspected, therefore you require a huge number of people to be able to do that. The treatment facilities themselves often find uh, challenges in terms of having uh, uh, appropriate technologies and uh, human capital in place. Many countries, they are doing repairing wood the pallet materials, but sometimes they don't treat those wood the pallet materials, which represent high risk on a trade. You may not be able to know whether really the part that has been replaced has been treated. When a country imports goods which are not fruit and vegetables, the inspectors don't inspect the book packaging materials carrying those non-fruit and vegetable goods. The collaboration with the customs is not very easy because the customs, they don't understand what the phytosanitary inspectors have to do. The macroeconomic component of the project looks at the opportunities that the standard offers to exporting companies. 
in terms of uh, gaining access to new markets with more stringent environmental regulations. In Kenya, the exports of coffee and tea increased by 39% in the aftermath of the uh, standard implementation. For the macroeconomic component, we interviewed 36 book packaging material treating facilities. We gather uh, data on the cost and on the benefits of treating book packaging materials. And one of the main results is that uh, um, those businesses are operating in a surplus. This suggests that implementing the standard at the business level is a totally viable economic operation. On top of that, it generates employment and it helps new businesses to flourish. So far, there's not much coordination amongst different countries, but countries can benefit a lot by coordinating their actions and sharing examples of best practice and reflections on the uh, often common challenges that they face. The project has been able to help us to understand how we can implement the program much better. It has given us the opportunity to identify so many irregularities. We have uh, actually discovered that uh, the standard have some guidelines that have to guide us how the companies should carry out their activities, how our inspectors has to work, and we are going to guide them from the learning that we have actually acquired in this workshop. The objective of the ISPM 15 in the long run would be to eliminate the pest spread across countries. I'd like to see uh, this standard implemented in all countries so that all trading partners had confidence that the treatment had been applied. The standard, if it's well implemented, will increase our exports so that it will be economy improvement for the country. We are able to protect our forests by ensuring that all the wood packaging material that is coming to the country is treated. We are going to have uh, access to other international uh, markets that we have not been able to go through because we didn't uh, use uh, the standard. We need to improve on the communication. We also need to regionally collaborate more so that we can find out what challenges are there and be able to address the challenges as a region.